Harlem, New York in the 1960s was a vibrant and exciting place. Fast, raw, cool hips, busy streets, long nights, Malcolm X picket signs, all describe the sign of the time. The intersection of a heightened political consciousness and industrious artistic community read like a who's who in the news column. Emerging from the times and the place was the little known art council that spearheaded art creation for the Yorkers and founded institutions like the Jazz Mobile and the Dance Mobile. Harlem Culture Council is an interesting thing. Planning Board 10 in the, in the Central Harlem uh, was examining how to revitalize Harlem, and culture was a very, very important part of that revitalization. Fred O'Neill and the Old Guard, as I call them, they were the black artists from the 40s, and that was the end of the Harlem or what we then call thought, or for I as a young person thought of, it's the end of the Harlem Renaissance. They had this committee meeting. There were 200 artists of color and not of color who felt that their particular art form was being ignored. The political consciousness was very high for the Black Arts Movement. Several people got together to uh, form a cultural council and uh, uh, they asked me if I would, would join and I said of course. And so there were classes that were sponsored. There were classes, there were workshops that were sponsored. I think the Harlem Culture Council gave one of the first workshops on how to write a grant. Our first project was the Jazz Mobile. Immediately I said, well, it's certainly we could, we could do uh, something along those lines. There's a tradition of uh, marching and, and so forth in New Orleans. And, uh, we could update that and uh, uh, put the put, uh, music on a, a, the same kind of conveyance that they have out there and have play some music and, and go through, through, through uh, the um, the, the neighborhoods. I was the administrator for the dance mobile and we use again just like the jazz mobile we fashioned a wagon. Putting dance in a situation like that is um, it's like creating a great overexposure for the performer. We pulled up in the block and we waited till it was dark. There was a whole movement of young choreographers who were not bent on Broadway or doing shows, and um, we felt that they had to be seen. Poets, musicians, dancers, painters, everybody, and the beautiful part about it, we all supported each other. And I do recall the conflict and the arguments which is also unfortunate, but those were the times that we lived in because we weren't clear about the philosophy from which we came. It was a lot going on back in, back in the early, early days. The fact of the matter is, there was a lot, a lot of confusion about what uh, the council really was designed to do. But it's like a who's who of black arts and culture. The people who were involved in it were in opera. So there was a conflict right there as to whether this was about the classical, in quotes, art form of a European uh, discipline or whether it was about black power. I mean, we had all that going on at the time. Mostly they would come up to me and say, you're the Harlem Opera? I didn't know we had a Harlem Opera. And we were doing that to each other all through the meeting because most people in the arts do their thing and they never get together. But the biggest 
constraint that I felt was making, I, I, I almost felt uh, a fierce kind of fight uh, to prove to the militants that Quan I was as black as they were. And uh, a Harlem Opera, when we formed the Afro-American Singing Theater, that was the reason, that was the political reason behind that entity, to prove that we were just as relevant as they were.